Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well and welcome to this bonus night ending upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman, Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadalny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost a cent. Click the like button takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all of these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into this night ending bonus upload, shall we? All right, guys, um, last night I had an amazing two encounters shared to us by a retired military couple, uh, Michelle and Carl. Tonight I have both of them on the line with me. Guys, would you like to say hi? Hello. Hi, guys. Hi, listeners. And um, they agreed to kind of share their encounters through their words and also uh, a lot of you guys know that they were um, on the comment section and there was a lot of questions and a lot of things that um, they wanted to address and clarify so um, let's get this started uh, now when you guys were in Arkansas can you guys give a little bit of layout of the land where you guys were first at? Um, well, when we were down in, uh, out, outside of Plummerville with our friend Austin, um, it was just kind of, it was a small community kind of back in the woods. It was uh, all African American. Um, and <laughs> it was mostly like old cattle pastures and trees. Okay. It was kind of flat. All right. And the rolling village. Yeah. Rolling Hills. All right. So then, Carl, you can you tell us exactly what went down? Uh, well, I went in the bathroom to sit down and go to the restroom, and uh, I mean, it wasn't a minute after I sat down. Uh, I heard kind of a growl snarl like right behind my head and when I heard it I could actually feel like the breath through the window because um, the window was open but it was just one of those little tiny windows it's only like about six inches across and it's probably like two foot tall right behind the toilet one of those ones is a little crank thing on the side where you crank it and the little blades glass open up like to come up and they were up and open when it happened okay and then you heard this this growl. Can you can you elaborate on you know what you how it sounded and it it was like it sent a vibration through me, the toilet, and the wall behind me, like the floor right there. Like it literally sent a vibration out. And when that did that, like the blood in my body, because I was so scared. I mean, I've never been this scared in my life. I never even knew this was possible. But I literally felt the blood come out of my head, my top of my body, go down my legs, to my feet. Like, all my blood just went to my feet. And did you, when you called for Michelle, that was like a second after you heard the first growl. Um, right. When she came in, that was when the second growl happened? Right. Well, it was... It was it's weird. It was like, it wasn't really like one and two. Like it kind of did that one big growl at me right initially. And then it just kind of did a little 
like a snarl grumble thing kind of and when she came in it was still kind of doing it okay so it was like a like a just a reverberating growl like or like that yeah okay now so she looks out the window or did you look out the window when she looked out the window i was scared to turn around like <laughs> i was i mean when it did that i was scared stiff like i was afraid to move right like i didn't even move my arms or anything like i froze stiff like a statue and i was like trying to get her attention in there because i was scared to move and i was like i i wanted to yell for her but i didn't want to I didn't want this thing behind me reaching through the window and grabbing me or something. <laughs> right, right. And like you and I had just, we had just spoke. You're, you were thinking people were going to think it's funny, but yeah, you're in your most vulnerable state. You know, I mean, you're, you're pretty much helpless at that point. You know, and yep. I, I can just imagine the terror. Now, Michelle, when you, when you hit the bathroom the the growl that you heard and then you looked out the window can you kind of elaborate on what happened there uh yeah um i walked in and i just heard this rumbling growl and it's uh, something i'd never heard before i never heard anything like it ever being with as much as i was as a child and i, I was just like what in my mind I'm like, what is that so I, I tried to look out the window at first but i couldn't see anything because it was bright too bright inside so i ran back and turned the light out came back to the window real quick and i looked out and i just saw this big black mass parting the brush and the tall grass that was back there okay now when you guys said it looked canine did you guys see the... no, no, no. no it sounded canine no, no. it never sounded really canine had. okay never i never got a really good space yeah. and it's just this big black mass yeah, moving yeah. on force so it was real broad it was real broad at the, at the, at the shoulder and, and narrow down to the back side oh, okay and then after that the night was pretty calm like there was no noise yeah. or yeah. okay yeah and that's, nothing else happened after that and then the next morning is when you yeah. found your friend's dog um, had been pretty much massacred. Yeah. Um, right. And you guys... You, yeah, you, whenever it went after that dog, it must have done it quick, because otherwise we would have heard the dog struggling with it out there, barking or something. But there was, we never heard the dog all night before that. Yeah, and, you know, pit bulls are... They get a bad rap anyway, but... You know, there any dog is gonna fight for its life against anything and make right. a noise. You know, so no matter how big or small or whatever it is, you know, they're gonna. Yeah, fortunately, it was on a chain, so it couldn't get away. You know. Right, right. Um, and now you had thought that the reason why it growled is because you went into the bathroom and interrupted its dinner pretty much on that poor dog, right? That's that's my theory on it. That's what I think happened. Because otherwise, I would have heard the dog in some way, shape, or form while it, while it was at the window at me. Right, right. And that window's eight feet off the ground. The bottom of it was eight foot off the ground. We checked that next morning when it all happened. That window was at least eight foot off the ground. Cause I'm six foot, and it was two foot higher than my head. Wow, wow. And how? What was the grass? Was it back there? Was it like a, a thick? Thick high grass, or was it? Yeah, it used to, it used to be a cattle field. Yep, a pasture. Grown up, it was, like it was grown, grown up. up. And so there was a few little, little scrub brushes here and there and stuff, and then you know mostly tall grass. So about a couple feet high, you'd say. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Probably about three feet tall grass. Wow. All right. And um, now <clears throat> when you when you saw, I'm, I'm sorry, I just I, I'm curious. When you saw, when you came to see your friend's dog, was did it like just look like just something ripped it apart, or was there bite wounds, or? Um. Yeah, it looked like something had just bit it open, basically. Okay. All right, and then you and said like everything. Out the inside. Yeah, that's you said everything was gone. That's yeah. that's sad. Yeah, sad. Yeah. Um. You were Yeah. Jeez. Um, that is insane. That is sad. Um, so then, years go by. You guys end up buying some more property, and um, you want to share about everything on that. Can you guys give us a layout of the land of your your? Sure. Um, 
when you're coming down the driveway, you pass through our gate, and it kind of winds around a little bit, and then it comes to the shed. It's about a quarter mile, yeah. And it comes to the shed in the house. The shed's before the house. And then the driveway kind of dead ends right there. But there is also like a little path that goes down the hill toward the river where we had um, 10 A-frame huts. And uh, and then it, that ended at the river and the creek running down the backside. And it was completely wooded. The wood, woods even came up to the back of the house. Okay. And yeah, there was no backyard or anything like that. I mean, it was just the house with the deck sitting in the middle of the woods. Right. So just real beautiful land, just tranquil. And now, oh, yeah. Your first, your first encounter when you were taking Sugar Bear out, um, I believe it was a, a crystal clear night out, and. You had yeah. your flashlight with, or you didn't take a flashlight your first right. time, and um, you were just walking. Now you heard a rock get flung from the trees, and it hit the ground. Yeah. Um, well, I, I walked from the house across the driveway to right near the fence because there was some mm -hmm. mowed grass on that side in our front yard, and down the one side of the driveway, um, going down to the gate. Um. And I'd walked across the driveway, and I was standing there, waiting for her to do her business, and I heard this rock hit a tree right next to the fence. I mean, it hit it hard. It just went to whack, and then it, you know, bounced off the ground a couple of times. And my dad, we, we were originally from uh, Oregon, and so my dad would watch everything he could see on Bigfoot. So when I was a kid, I got real familiar with Bigfoot, and I always believed in it. So that's the first thing that popped into my mind because I had heard people talking on webs websites and stuff about Bigfoot and that they do that. And so that's... Right, right. Now, <clears throat> and then you went in and I think you told Carl and the mm -hmm. next morning he kind of... Right. He kind of didn't... Because he didn't see it, you know, so he kind of... Right. Um, didn't... I thought he was an amazing thing. Right, right. Just the noise of being out in the out in the woods, right? Um, I mean, there's so many things you hear out there in the forest. I mean, we were out way up. That property was way out. I mean, every animal you could think of across that property: bears, mountain lions, bobcats, coyotes, deer, 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 deer. <laughs> I mean, it had everything there. Right, and then <laughs> the second encounter happened. Um, that was, I think about 11 or no there was one around three after that one correct um yeah well there yeah three or four yep. um i brought sugar out i said i was really tired because it was late in the morning and i hadn't had but a couple hours sleep because me and my husband were kind of night owl <laughs> but um i took her out and forgot to put the leash on her so we went down the driveway toward the gate instead of toward the river where i got the rock thrown <clears throat> And uh, I was, she was about to go pee, and I hear this big wham on the side of this, our neighbor's shed across the fence. Okay. And they, they had stayed the middle buildings, and ours was wood, and it was across the driveway on the opposite side. But yeah, I was, that was over at the neighbor's property, and, it, and he whammed on their shed, and it scared the living daylights out of me. I mean, I clicked off the flashlight and dropped it at my feet. <laughs> And I was like, holy crap. And I bent down and picked it up as quick as I could and splashed it back on and turned around and looked. And, of course, I didn't see nothing. So I figured he was probably hiding behind one of the, you know, the sheds back there because they're pretty close together. Right. And it just, uh, you know, thwacked the shed to probably get your attention or scare you a little bit and just watch yeah. you. And that went on for about a month. Um, yeah, about but, a month and a half, yeah. But you did, you started bringing out your 12-gauge with you. Um, right after the first one, <laughs> and the next, I think the next time you were, you were barbecuing, <clears throat> you were on your mm -hmm. back grill barbecuing, and yeah. you heard the grunt that sounded like a gorilla. Um, yeah, did that come from the woods or the by, by the river or by the sheds? Um, yeah, the it's down, down in the woods by the river, right yeah. about where the river and the creek connect. Okay, okay. The now, same place. The same place Lily was fishing. Now, when you heard that that noise, 
Um, mm -hmm. Did it sound similar to the growl from the night that Carl, what he heard in the trailer, or was no, it? No, 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 totally different. Completely totally different. Completely yeah. different. Okay. It was kind of a uh, kind of noise. Right. I can't hurt, do it justice, but yeah, it was kind of. Okay, and then um, what I heard was definitely canine. Right. Yeah. I mean, I recognized the sound that it was a canine, and the fact, and when it clicked in my head that I just had a canine growling me through a window, eight feet in the air, I freaked out. That scared the crap out of me. Yeah, he thought it was I still think it was a werewolf. Yeah. Oh yeah, I would have to agree with you a hundred percent, and I think most of the people would too. Um. Just by the way, the the sound, the reverberation, you know, there's always yeah. been... Yeah, and what happened to the dog? And what happened to the dog? Yeah, yeah, just the, the pure, you know, attack on the dog. And then I think what happened next was your friend, Willie, came over to go fishing. Um, yeah, he fished down there before. I mean, we lived there for probably, yeah, four years total, and it was the last year that this started happening. So he'd been down there fishing many times, and since Carl didn't believe, you know, there was a Bigfoot out there, he said, yeah, go on, go down fishing, you know? <laughs> right. Now, this whole time, this whole time, up until um, Carl had had his, at the last point when he had his encounter, you hadn't heard any of these noises, Carl, or? I thought my wife was nuts. Okay. Okay, so, and then. I thought my wife was nuts or something. Yeah, I was losing my mind there. <laughs> right, and then Willie comes, known to tie one on here and there, and you know he comes running, one shoe, none of his stuff left, but obviously petrified. Um, yeah. And he had to be really scared because he wouldn't have kept running. It was really rocky, sharp rocks. I mean, he had to hurt his foot to keep running, but he didn't turn around and grab that shoe. He kept right on booking. Right, that's that's that poor guy. I could just picture somebody running. <laughs> For dear life. Yeah. And then, um, I, I think, think he got the worst of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it could have been right behind him for all as he knows. Yeah. <laughs> well, he said it was in front of him, right on the other side of the creek. Yeah. Now, how big was the creek? Like, what was the. It was probably what, 20 feet across right there. No, no. Well, yeah, there by the river. Yeah, I got the big two across. Like, two foot across where the water swung around all the time? Well, when the water was real high. It was about 20 feet across. At the time, the water was hot. We like watching the otters fish yeah. out there. They would go on there and fish a lot. Okay, that's cool. That is cool. That's beautiful property out there, I bet, yeah. And then um, the last, the second to last encounter. Now, it's funny. It's interesting because I think the night, it was about 11. You, yeah. Michelle, went out and you heard the shuffle, shuffle. I think that's mm -hmm. when you pumped the shotgun. Right. Um, flash the flashlight. You didn't see any eye shine, but you described right. it like an elephant. And then yeah, about loud. a week about a week later, your husband hears it and says prehistoric mammoth, which is pretty much an elephant. So it was right. huge. <laughs> it was huge. Whatever it was was friggin' huge. Yeah. Those woods was not no like six or eight foot dog man. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you that right now. What I heard come to those woods was bigger than that. It had to, if it was a big foot, it had to be a big, big foot. I mean, like it had to be like ten or twelve foot tall or something for the noise I heard. I mean, this thing was it sounded like a it's like a dozer taking trees down coming through the woods. But then afterwards, there was no tree damage. There was no tracks. There was no nothing. I can't. I have no logical or rational explanation for what happened. That is, and, and like you said, there was no noise other than just the crashing of the trees. Yeah. Yeah, it sounded like something <clears throat> coming right at me from the woods. In my own way, and when, when it got close to the edge of the wood line, to me, when it got close, I jacked the shotgun and it just froze, just like it did with her. Right. And Only in my case, it was going from right to left from the end of the driveway toward the house in the woods. It sounded like it was probably maybe 15, 20 feet in the woods. And yeah, like I said, it was just crashing. It said it was in a hurry, and it did not care. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and that's why I, I, I pumped the shotgun because I'm thinking, dang, this thing's running at me, you know. <laughs> and during all this, <clears throat> I skipped over that by accident. Um, your neighbor 
had said they saw someone, they chased someone off their property, humanoid. Um, yeah, a large man is what they said, yeah. Towards towards your property, correct? Or, right. Okay. Yeah, they said they chased it off. They, said they chased a large man off their property and onto ours. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was just like right after dark. Now, in that area where you guys were living, has there was there ever talk or any any lore of Sasquatch or cryptids in yeah, that area? Uh, nobody ever mentioned or said anything. The only thing anybody in the neighborhood ever talked about a lot was the mountain lions that would come through. Right, okay. All right. Now, you did at the end of everything, you said that you guys got three Glocks because you have a son. Did he ever... Yeah. Did he ever hear any of this or witness anything? No, no he, he, wasn't wasn't living with his he wasn't living with us at that moment. Okay. He okay. moved on the back of that. Okay. All right. And now I know that you guys said <clears throat> that you guys wanted to clear a couple of things up um, in the comment section. Um, right. Yeah. Well, one thing is we're not retired military. We're veterans. We didn't retire from military. But we're we'll retired. Start. And now we're retired. Okay, I apologize. Yeah, I'm I'm severe PTSD, so I'm 100 percent PTSD from the VA. Oh, thank you for your service. I, I appreciate that, and I'm sure everybody else does too. Um, thank you. There was one question that I I saw, and um, I know Michelle, I. I the woman asked, why would you bring your dog into her puppy into the woods? And right. you pretty much, you, you just, you were surrounded by woods other than a fence line right. in your driveway. So it was your, it Yeah, was, we had no like fenced backyard or fenced in yard or nothing. There wasn't nothing like that. It was just the woods all the way around the house in the driveway. Okay. All right. So, um, wow. That is, I, has your friend Austin, after that happened, do you still, has he had any other encounters or anything crazy happen? Um, I, don't, I don't talk to him anymore regularly, but uh, back in the day, he never mentioned anything. Okay. All right. Now, what did he, what did he think when, what did you guys think when you found the dog? Well, people know me as an honest person. They know I'm not a liar or anything, so he believed me, but he also thought maybe I was just a little off my rocker or something probably in his head. He didn't say that, but right. he, he probably thought oh, Carl heard something or misjudged something until what happened with the dog that day. Austin. The next day when the dog sees what happened. Oh, are you talking about Austin? Or no, I'm talking about right? Austin. Yeah, I'm talking about Austin. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, Austin, he... Uh, he didn't know what to think after the dog. That's what really got everybody thinking that K. Carl's not nuts after all, so speak. Right, right. Did he have any theories on what might have killed the dog? Or I mean, because pretty much. Oh no, we had no idea. It, there was. It didn't. It didn't look like anything we'd ever seen before or recognized. Right. It doesn't match the description of any other attack, other than attacks that we hear that are covered up by the news, saying wild dogs, boars, or. You know, right. some malt sets. The, the, the odd thing about it was there was no entrails or anything left laying around. Like right. There was no strong ground. Like it was almost like they just disappeared, like out of the dog. Like it just ate all the inside of the, like the guts and the stomach and, and the chest. It just ate it from the stomach inside out, basically. But there was no mess everywhere. Like you would see a pack of dogs or something, there would be a mess. Like a pack of coyotes would be tearing it up every direction. And stuff. Right. There was nothing like that. Lot. Yeah, because if it was like like you said, if it was a pack of coyotes or even a cougar, mountain lion, bear, there would be some sort of mess, you know. Like this was, yeah. you know, meticulously, really yeah. meticulously killed, you know, almost. So, wow. Yeah, they happened fast because we never heard from the dog bark or yeah, warning the house. So that made whatever got it got it fast. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you were in the bathroom, so you didn't hear anything. You know, it's it's insane except the growl. And like you said, you, I mean, you're in a trailer. The back window's open in the bathroom. So if the dog, I mean, it, you would have heard something if it, you know, that it did happen that fast. And it's it's sad. It's crazy. Um, I literally, I literally think I interrupted this meal. <laughs> wow. 
That is, I, I feel so bad for, for that poor dog. Now, yeah, we did too. Now, um, you guys are planning on moving back out into the the wilderness of Arkansas soon. Um, is there? Any uh, well, we don't know about soon, but as quickly as we get things together, can we don't. We like Prairie Creek here. It's a wonderful neighborhood and all, but and love the people. But I just we prefer being out in the country. We're just country people. We're not city folk. Right now, is there any apprehension, or is it more? Does that make it more interesting for you? Because a lot of people get leery of, you know, they have an encounter, and they some people don't even want to go into the woods again. Other people get no. drawn into learning more and wanting to find more. We don't, info. Go, into the, we don't go into the woods on arm anymore. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and that's the way it changed about. That's about the only thing that changed right. about us really is that we go to the woods. We love the outdoors. We can go out there now, but we go armed now. We don't go into the woods unarmed like we used to. Right. And me, it's kind of a combination between curiosity and rightfulness, I guess. Um, because like I said, I really didn't feel threatened by him when he was banging on the shed and stuff. Like I said, I just figured he was having a little fun with me. Yep. Um, but when he came crashing through the woods like that, I mean, that kind of scared me. So, scared. so, I mean, I, I, let's put it this way. I have great respect for the animal. <laughs> yeah. It scared me when he came coming up through there. I guarantee you it scared yeah. me. Yeah. It wasn't I mean, as scary as the canine thing. Nothing in my life since I was born was that scary. But I, it made me pump the shotgun, so it got my attention. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, a lot of people, <clears throat> and I find this fascinating because I, the more people I talk with, I find that, like I said, people, there's people that have, don't want to go into the woods. There's people mm -hmm. that, they, it changes them to where they become, you know, they're, they want to go into the woods, but they're armed, and they want to learn right. more about it, and... Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I think that's, that's fascinating in itself because. Well, we do want to know more about it. We're both very curious. Right. And there's just, there's nowadays, there's so much information. I, when I had my encounter in 94, there wasn't even internet, you know, and I was, I was right. going to like used bookstores to find information Did about. Did you actually like see though know what it was? Like <clears throat> when we were pulling out of a cul-de-sac. Um, I don't know if you heard my encounter, <clears throat> but it was me and my three friends and my girlfriend and his girlfriend and a driver were all hanging out in a cul-de-sac. It hadn't been built yet. Um, they put the, st they, they put the street lights in. So there was four street lights. It was a very small cul-de-sac. There was going to be six houses in it, basically woods all around us, um, <clears throat> and we were sitting on the inside, kind of like the island of the cul-de-sac. So the main road ran what we were, we were, there was like the little U of land with a little bit of woods behind us and then the main road. And then in front of us was dense woods, which went up to a mountain to an old um, asylum. And then it was a prison at one time, but it's closed now just miles and miles of woods we were standing there and there there was noises these weird noises and eye shine um this is before dog man was talked about you know people talked about werewolves vampires bigfoot this and that um there was eye shine about four feet high up to six seven eight feet high and probably four or five, um, my friend that was, uh, the girls got inside, they heard these weird screeches, um, my friend was sitting with me, he was from Czechoslovakia, um, he moved here when he was like 12, and we were both curious, you know, we were 17 and idiots, you know, we were just like, what is that, you know, like, just wanting to know what that was, um, the first thing that came to my mind, I don't know why, was vampires, you know, because, so 
my friend Martin started getting scared and he was like, like into bodybuilding, you know, he was from Czechoslovakia and he, he sounded just like Arnold Schwarzenegger and looked like a mini Jeff, we got to get in the car. So we jumped in this car, we jumped in this old gutless cutlass, it was like an 84 cutlass, and just a big boat of a car. We we took off out of the cul-de-sac onto the main road and turned left. Um, and as we were turning, I was looking out the driver's side back window, but I was in the passenger side of the car, so I had like, at an angle... And I saw a huge, upright, canine-looking thing come out of the woods. Um, the next day, me and my friend Martin came back. Um, and we were, you know, looking around. We saw some pretty large prints, dog prints. And the carpenters were building the houses. It was daytime then. Um... They saw what we were looking. They saw us looking at these tracks, and they saw us looking in the woods. And they're like, "Did you guys lose dog or dogs or something?" And we were like, "No, why? You know, we we're just looking around." And um, the guy said, "Well, before the saint, the night before the night we saw what we saw, he said we were packing up, getting ready to, you know, we were closing everything up for the night, and it sounded like there was a bunch of wild dogs behind." the houses out in the woods and that was probably like maybe three or four hours before we came in you know and just we're just hanging out there you know we weren't drinking or doing anything we were just hanging out and listening to music because it makes me wonder if the new construction was like infringing on their territory i think it was because that whole property was just forest you know um yeah. and in pine it was it was a mixture of pine maple oak you know, and what we have in upstate New York, and there was three of them, three cul-de-sacs built all at the same time, you know, they gutted out the forest, and just, you know, it didn't go too far in, but it went far enough in to encroach on their land if they were back there. Makes you want to wonder if the people that lived in those houses ever had any experiences. I, I wonder, I wonder, because one of the girls that was with us that night, um, still her parents still live her parents ended up buying a house in that cul-de-sac that's why we went and hung out there because she was just looking you know we were looking at the skeleton of her new house and um it was just it was a weird weird encounter um but yeah that was scary because like that canine thing i don't know why but for some reason even though i smash them i just i don't know that a big canine like that, like a werewolf or a dog man, it just seems so much frightening, much scarier to me for some reason. Yeah, it's. I think it's because the teeth and they're cunning and they're a predator. You know, we don't really think of Bigfoot as a predator, um, just because of what you know. We they're they're like the old man of the woods, pretty much is how you know they're big upright gorilla and so. Now, Michelle. Way, if I have land and they're there, I would actually want to be friends with them if possible. I don't want to make enemies out of them. Right. Sure. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure. I I have a theory. Like I think the Native Americans knew of both of these species existing, um, and I think there was, for some reason, I think there was a pack with the Sasquatch. Not like a treaty like we have with human to human, but. <laughs> Just an understanding. Hey, you don't mess with us, we won't mess with you. Um, right. But, Michelle, you said when you were in Oregon, your dad um, was big into, you know, learn, reading about Sasquatch. Did he have an encounter out there, or was that just something he was into because that was... No, that's just something he was into. Um, he did work for a logging company, but he worked in a sawmill okay. uh, out there. And then we moved to Arkansas, and I was raised here. All right. Well... Is there anything else you guys want to add for the night, or? Um, if anybody's got any answers to explain the noise, I mean, I don't understand the noise, and then they're not being broke trees. I mean, even to this day, I'm completely baffled by the fact there's no tracks, no no sign of what I heard. Right. Yeah. It just I, isn't logical to me. I'm a very logical, analytical person, and that just, my brain still can't wrap around that. 
Yeah, that is definitely, you know, I, like I was, we were talking earlier, um, the, the gentleman in upstate New York, just a couple hundred miles from me, right on the Canadian border, um, when he was a kid, he heard the woods crashing and went back. There was no, you know, no sticks broken, no trees knocked down. And, you know, it sounds like the trees are just getting taken out. It's a very strange strange thing that there wasn't anything taken out on you know you think with all the noise you guys were hearing you wouldn't have a forest behind your house with all the noise you know yeah no you just thought that he was clearing a road i mean you know, whatever it was anyway you thought there'd be practically a road sized path through there yeah sound like yeah there's a uh, there's a boat launch down the river from where we were staying I would like to myself to, I'd like to go back down there and see if he's still there. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, it has really made me curious. Also, this mostly started in the spring and went through to, like, the late fall. And I don't I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but I do all the stuff at Bush where, that we think was a Sasquatch. It seemed to have all happened, like, in, like, summer, like, spring, summer, and fall. Okay. All right. Now, what about the the one with Austin? Was that same around the same time too, or uh, that was like towards the end of summer? Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't know what that. I mean, I'm not really sure what they do in the winter. I mean, that's that's a pretty good. I've wondered, always wondered how what they do if they just cave up and maybe they hibernate. Yeah, or just stay in, stay in a hidey hole somewhere and stay warm. You know collect as much stuff to you know eat and sustain for the winter but yeah that's definitely a strange one there well if you do go back michelle obviously you're going to be armed um please yeah. <laughs> please stay safe and um you know keep us i don't want to go back by myself i'm hoping i was well, on our property now yeah, yeah. we right can you buy the land and let it go back to the guy so right um it's also his land now, too. It's not ours. We don't own it any longer, so. But we can't go down there to the river. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't get everybody to go with me. I was telling Carl, I wish Barry would come and go with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you do, please be careful. And if you see okay. anything, please keep us in uh, in the loop on that. I will. <laughs> so, if anybody has any questions, tell them to throw in the comments, and we'll, see, we'll read them and check them out. Yeah, guys, I mean, if you got any questions, these Michelle and Carl, obviously, a lot of you guys, you had some great conversations with, you know, with people. Um, I hope maybe if someone can, you know, shine some by light. The way, on there was, by the way, there was somebody that made a comment on the comments. He was an Army Ranger. Um, he had uh, something happen to him. I would like to hear his story in full. The Army Ranger, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping to get, uh, there was a subscriber. I think, I think his name's D.D. Keggs or something. Yeah, yeah, I, I've seen him comment, and I, I've tried to reach out to him. Hopefully, because I saw you guys were talking. D.D., if you, you know, <laughs> send me your send me your encounter. and Because uh, I do have another person who had an encounter while he was in... Um, Afghanistan <clears throat> and um, it happened he was a marine in Afghanistan and they saw what they they were they were doing um, night patrol and they saw something jump from the top of a building down onto you know the ground and run through the street they had their night vision on um, I've narrated that encounter on the show uh, he said that he... We're Christian. We're Christians, and I don't mean to be religious or anything. We kind of have a theory that maybe the veil is thinning. And so these things are becoming more and more out seen. Yeah, yeah. That, that could be true. Definitely, 100%. There's... You know, it, we don't really know why there's so many encounters happening. I Part of me wants to say there isn't, but with the internet here we can get more encounters shared but it just seems like there's more and more encounters and you know they're just they getting... also be that we're encroaching on their land as we populate yeah 
Yeah, and they're getting brazen, you know, with the attacks on, you know, people, the the teacher, the teacher, the uh, the doctor in Georgia, the teacher in North Carolina, the boy in Kentucky, and then the news just covers it up. You don't hear anything else about it, and it's, I don't even know, it's, it's crazy. Well, they call it a on. bear attack or a cougar attack or... Mm -hmm. um, they even they even code words for that stuff. Even on the radios, they'll call it like black bears or black cats or go. They you know yeah it is. They got codes. Yeah, yeah, black dog, black cow, or something. And um, just like the I I did an in, an upload about it about a month ago, a couple months ago. The nurse, the home healthcare nurse in Texas. You you you're obviously an intelligent guy, and you've been in the woods. You definitely, if you hear a bunch of boar coming, you're going to get back in your car or at least jump on top of the, you know, the car. There's no way. Come on, get in the car up a tree. Yeah, there's no way that a, a pack of boar, wild boar, killed that woman in Texas on Thanksgiving. Um, as she was walking into one of her clients' homes. I just, I don't buy it. It's not, it, it, there's just too much non, nothing makes sense with these attacks and their answers. There's a lot of these, there's a lot of these stories out there that don't make a lot of sense if you look into them. Yep, yep. And I've done quite a few, you know, encounter or episodes about it. It just, it, it baffles me. It really does. And there you have it, folks. I hope you all enjoyed this night ending bonus as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. After all, it is your support that keeps the channel growing and going. And honestly, what gives us all a place and a chance to share our experiences and theories judgment free. Everyone's simply treated with the respect we all deserve. So thank you. Please stay safe, happy, healthy and ever vigilant. Keeping an eye on our children, pets, family and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there and they are dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.